I think we are going to go ahead and, and get rolling here. Um, thank you to everyone for, uh, for joining this morning. Um, we're, we're super excited to have you um, to talk about how to optimize your gigs and, and really how to make the most out of um, your presence on, on Fiverr. Um, before we get into that, um, I kind of want to walk you through kind of what to expect here. Um, I obviously want to introduce myself as well. So we'll start with the introduction. My name is Chris. I am a seller success manager here at Fiverr. What that means is I'm helping sellers on the platform really get the most out of what they're doing on Fiverr. I'm working with high value and high potential sellers every day in terms of how to make their gig the best it can possibly be, how to take care of buyers in the right way, just generally how to grow their business on Fiverr. Um, so that's what I do day to day. Um, prior to Fiverr, I worked for Disney for about five years. Um, with Disney, I was really in the, the high-end service industry. Um, I was taking care of CEOs and celebrities, um, professional athletes. I helped launch a few new lines of business um, with Disney. Um, so I have experience in these types of, of growth situations. Um, I, I've been with Fiverr now um, for a good handful of months um, and it is just as cool as you think it would be. Um, so I'm excited to be here with you this morning. Um, well, morning for me here in, in sunny Orlando, Florida. Let's talk about kind of what to expect over the next um, hour or so. We're gonna roll right in. Um, I have a presentation for you in terms of gig optimization, how to really maximize what you're doing on Fiverr. Um, so I'm gonna run through that. That should take probably 30, 35 minutes. Um, and then the rest of the time I wanna open up for, for Q and A. Um, you should see a Q and A box um, on your screen there. Feel free to type in any questions you've got. Um, you know, I, I wanna be able to address those at the end so as you come up with them, feel free to write them. You don't have to wait till the end, though I will wait till the end to address them. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask whatever questions you've got. When you are asking questions, try and keep it general. Um, keep in mind, I don't have your gig right in front of me. Um, and we do have a bunch of other people in the, the webinar here. Um, so try and keep them general so we can address um, information that'll, that'll help everybody. Um, you may see some other uh, hosts up here with me, though not on video. Um, we do have Yuli, who is joining from my, my team as well. Um, she is one of the leaders of customer success here in Fiverr. Um, Lodum and Eliana from our editorial team. Um, so they may chime in um, occasionally, or they may just uh, see what you guys have to say and, and um, you know, bring to the table. So with that said, let's jump right into the, the presentation here, um, and we will go from there. One quick note before we get started, I do want to note um, the presentation is, of course, being recorded for our internal purposes. Um, if anyone is not okay with that, please feel free to uh, to kind of go about your day. Um, we are going to send an email after the fact with a kind of a, a cheat sheet on some of the big points that we've covered here. Um, obviously, it won't be everything, um, but just so everyone knows, the presentation is being recorded. With that said, let's jump right into it here. Um, give me just a sec here and we will get rolling. Perfect. So gig optimization is what we are talking about today. Really how to maximize your presence on Fiverr and how to maximize that presence in every step of the journey that a buyer is going to go on. Um, so before we, we talk too much about how to optimize your gig, I want to talk real quick about why we optimize your gig, right? There are thousands of sellers on Fiverr on a given day. You need to stand out from them, right? That's the challenge is how do you separate yourself and differentiate yourself from everybody else on the platform to that end quality and experience matter. Those things make a difference to buyers. So we want to make sure your gig is showing off the quality and experience that you bring to the marketplace. In addition, we want you to have ownership over your gig. Your gig is your business. Um, we want you to be able to put a personal touch on it. And these types of optimizations that we're going to talk about today are a great way for you to put a personal touch on the work that you do every single day um, and, and really take ownership of what you're doing on the platform to allow you to tap into that global network that Fiverr has. Right? We are a global company. We have buyers and sellers from every single corner of the globe. 
we want you to be able to tap into that. Um, these types of optimizations are going to help you do that. The last point here might be the most important one. Success leads to further success on Fiverr. Uh, I like to liken it to pushing a big boulder down a hill, right? Sometimes getting that boulder started is tough. Um, that first step takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. But once it gets going, that momentum gets going, sometimes it can really take off. Business on Fiverr can be just like that. Those first couple sales sometimes can be really tough and you wanna focus your effort into getting that momentum because once you get it, the business can really get rolling. With that said, let's talk about the three different stages of optimization we're gonna talk about um, here today. These are kind of the three steps of the journey that a, a buyer takes from when they need a problem solved to when they purchase from you. That first step is in regards to visibility and impressions, right? A buyer has a problem they need solved. They, they go to the search bar, they type in whatever they're looking for. How do we make sure your gig shows up? How do we make sure they're seeing you? Things like title and search tags play a big role there, and we're going to talk more about those. Um, but that second step then becomes your gig comes up, but so do 40 or 50 other gigs around you. What makes a buyer at that point click on you and not someone else? So how do we maximize your potential at that stage? That's things like gig, the gig image, your starting price. Those are factors that come into play on that front. Then that final step of the journey is right. That buyer is on your gig. They've made it to your gig. How do we close the deal? How do we make sure they click the order button instead of going to find somebody else? And every single thing on your gig plays a role there. And we're going to talk about all of these things in depth as we go here. Let's start by talking about impressions. Again, a measurement of just how visible your gig is. Now we are going to talk about the, the um, kind of the search engine optimization side of things, the keywords, the terms, the tags, we're going to hit on that. But before we do that, one thing I really, really want to stress to you is how important it is that you take care of your buyers because buyer satisfaction at the end of the day is really um, the, the best way to maximize your exposure on Fiverr. Um, make sure you are delivering high quality service, high quality results, take care of your buyers. Um, that is the best way to ensure that your gig stays visible because those buyers are gonna come back time and time again. I cannot stress this point enough. With that said, let's talk about kind of the technical side of impressions here. Um, the, the terms, the title, the tag. Specifically, again, gig titles, search tags, what we, talk, what we are talking about here. One thing that I really encourage you to keep in mind on this front is that most buyers are searching for a service probably in a different way than you do as a seller. Most buyers are using the search bar to find what they're looking for. They're not naviga navigating through subcategories. They're typing words into a search bar to find what they're looking for. To that end, one of the best ways to improve the likelihood that your gig's going to be seen is by creating a match between the words in your gig's title and your gig's search tags and matching those with the terms that buyers are probably searching for when they're looking for your service. Now the challenge here becomes making sure your gig title stays concise and readable and sums up your service, all while having that subtext in the back of your mind of what terms and phrases can I use that will maximize the likelihood that I'm gonna be seen when a buyer is searching. So when it comes to some best practices on titles and tags, you definitely wanna put yourself in the buyer's shoes. Think about if you were searching for your service, how would you search? If you can't remove yourself from that seller headspace, that's okay. Ask someone, ask your loved ones, ask husbands or wives or brothers or sisters or best friends, ask them. If you were looking for my service, how would you search? and then keep those learnings in mind when you're titling your gig. One thing you do want to avoid is having overlap between your gig title and the five search tags that you're able to add to every individual gig. You are allowed five tags on each gig. Use them. Don't leave money on the table. 
use all five of them, but make sure those tags complement your gig title. You don't want to have that double dipping going on. There's just no benefit to it. So the example I like to give is say you're a voiceover artist and your gig title is that I will record an American male voiceover. Great. Your search tags should not be American male voiceover. You want to have words that complement that title. Um, maybe projects that you work on, commercial, narration, audiobooks, things like that, that maybe a buyer is searching for, but they don't fit naturally into your, your gig title. When titling your gig, you want to be specific about what you're providing. We want buyers to understand what it is you're selling, but we don't want to be so specific that we trap ourselves in a little box, right? We don't want to be so niche that the only people who are clicking on our, on our gig are people who want something very, very specific. I know that's a tough challenge. I know it's, it's kind of confusing, but you want to have a big umbrella while also being specific about what it is you're offering. I do have some examples here of some great gig titles as well as some less than stellar gig titles. And you don't need me to walk you through every single one of these. You can see the difference, right? On the left-hand side, they're vague. They don't read particularly well. They're certainly not optimized um, for what a buyer could be searching. I will, I will record guitar for your song. That is my top gig. Funny gig title, but I promise you no buyer is searching using those terms. On the right hand side, a different story, right? These gig titles are really good. They're specific. They're optimized for the search engine. Um, they describe the service well. Um, you can see the difference between these, these two sides here. So that's gig title and gig tags. Really important. Um, you should certainly, certainly pay attention to those things. But again, the one thing I do want to stress when it comes to visibility, take care of your buyers. Having good communication with them, being on time with your deliveries, um, stay on top of the service side of things is the most effective way you can continue to grow your gig over the long term. Cannot stress it enough. Stay on top of the service. Let's transition now to the second stage of that funnel here, which is clicks, right? How do we get a buyer to click on you and not everybody else that shows up around you on the marketplace? The best way to do that is to make sure your gig is visually appealing, visually stimulating, and professional looking. I like to compare it to if you were opening a physical storefront, if you were opening a physical store at your local mall or marketplace or wherever it is, you would want the outside of that storefront to look good. You would want it to catch people's eye. You would want it to look clean and professional. You have to treat your gig image the same way. It is your storefront people are going to come or go based on what they see. So take the time to make sure it looks good. Let's talk about how to do that. There is an ideal size for a gig image. It is 608 by 410 pixels. Um, if you're gonna keep, if you wanna scale up from that, that's okay. Just keep that ratio in mind. It's really important that we fill the box and that we look good. Again, professionalism. I'm gonna say it a thousand more times today. It is really important. Your gig image has to look professional and premium. If you are like me and you have no artistic bones in your body whatsoever, that is okay, totally fine. Find somebody who can design it. Fiverr has tons of professional graphic designers who can do this type of work for you at an affordable price. It is a worthwhile investment. If you're serious about your presence on Fiverr, take the time, take the investment, and, and really make sure your image is as good as it can possibly be. Um, it's so, so important. Gig image really is the, probably the, the most important factor in determining if a buyer's clicking on you or if they're going somewhere else. So let's talk about what makes a great gig image. You'll see here we've broken it down into two separate categories um, based on, on what you're selling on Fiverr because depending on your area of expertise, 
the best practice for a gig image might be a little bit different here. So up top, we've got visual categories. That's for, for the graphic designers in the crowd here. Um, those types of categories are best served by having a single eye-catching sample front and center. Pick your best work, put the spotlight on it. Um, make sure it reinforces the gig title and, and the service you're offering. Of course, if you are advertising minimalist logo design, you need to make sure that you have a minimalist logo on display. Make sure those two things match up. But other than that, let the work do the talking. Um, no need for a ton of text on, on these. You see the Deer Dance logo here is a great example. Clean, professional, eye-catching. I don't know if you can see, but if you look really close, you'll see that the image, the, the white behind the logo is actually a faded picture of a deer. Again, just a really cool design. Um, it's gonna catch people's eye as they're browsing the marketplace. So that's a great example there. For non-visual categories, a little bit different recipe for success here. Um, professional headshots, use them. Buyers in these categories, these non-visual categories, writing and translation, music and audio, digital marketing, things like that, buyers connect with faces. They want to see who they're working with. So put yourself front and center. Um, in terms of text on those images, 20% or less. It needs, the text needs to be readable. It needs to be crisp. It needs to be evident what the service is and no more. We don't want a really busy image that will turn people away. So Matt here has a great example. Professional headshot, front and center, blog and web content. There's no question about what his service is. It's not super busy. That's the type of gig image you wanna to strive towards in those categories. Beyond that, let's talk about gig videos. In some categories, a quality well-made gig video can increase the likelihood of a sale by up to 200%. Now I know that's a huge statistic, but the one thing I really want to stress here is quality and well-made. A good video converts. If you can't put together a professional video, that is totally fine. Not everybody has the ability or resources to do that. That's okay. But if that is, is you, you want to stick to just a standard gig image. A, a professional, well-made gig image is going to serve you better than a half-baked video. But for those of you that are able to, to produce a quality gig video, we want to make sure we have an image-like thumbnail because this gig video will function as your gig image on the marketplace. So we want to make sure, just like the example in the center here, um, that, that it, it looks like a gig image. And we want that video to really show off both yourself as well as the service you're providing. Um, so I have a great example here. I want to take a minute or so to watch it so everyone can see what you should be striving towards if you are creating a gig video because this is one of my favorites on the entire marketplace. What does your brand sound like? The truth is, every brand needs a sound, and we... ...can pretty much do it all. Or visit auburnhousewash.com. Auburn Housewash. The very best clean that you've ever seen. Carlin, all my friends, it's the Tony Gallo Show. For 10 cents. Nothing much these days except for a ton of fun at 1 800 10 cent, where you can chat, mingle, or find a single, and so much more. And the great thing is, we can create your jingle in any genre or style. Get your jingle from the duo who not only has experience in the music industry, but who also has experience in the marketing and advertisement industries. The duo who specializes in audio branding. The duo who answers the question What does your brand sound like? No any music. So you see, right, great, great example of a professional, well-made video that shows off who the buyers are interacting with and really what they can expect. Um, so that's what you should be striving for in terms of gig video. The other major factor in terms of getting clicks in the marketplace is your starting price, right? It's the number that buyers are going to see. So it's something you should spend some time thinking about in terms of 
what works for you. So when it comes to setting your starting price, a couple things you want to think about, right? What would you normally charge for this service? Um, given your level of expertise and, and the time commitment involved, um, what's a, a price you feel good about? Um, what are your competitors charging, both on Fiverr, both offline? Do some research, spend some time looking at what other people are charging for similar services. Um, and that'll give you a ballpark of, of where you should be. Think about what type of buyer you're trying to attract, right? The, the five, $10 price point attracts a different buyer than the $100, $150 price point, but not every service matches up with either one of those, those ranges, right? You have to kind of do some, some assessment in terms of who are you really trying to appeal to um, with your service and then price accordingly. The most important thing I can tell you when it comes to starting price is to price your gig appropriately based on the experience and quality that you're bringing to the marketplace. Cannot stress that enough. You have to do some honest self-assessment in regards to what am I bringing to the table um, and what, what's an appropriate price? What do I feel good about? Um, you know, if you're a lifelong graphic designer and you've you know, designed at all these professional ad agencies, $5 probably doesn't make sense for you. But for somebody that, that's you know, maybe just doing it as a hobby, maybe that five, $10 price point does make sense. So think about what you're bringing to the marketplace and price accordingly. So let's talk about the third step of the funnel here, conversion, right? The buyers on your gig, how do we make sure they order? We're gonna stay on the topic of pricing for just a couple more minutes here. I wanna talk about packages. Adding packages to your gig is a great way to give buyers more options. Um, I like to, to compare it to um, an ice cream shop, right? Imagine you really want ice cream and you go to an ice cream shop um, and all they have is vanilla on a sugar cone, right? It, it's technically what you were looking for, but you probably don't feel great about that. You were probably looking for something with more options, more flavors, more cones. Um, packages is the same way for fiber right? Give your buyers options. Allow them to customize their experience on your gig. Be able to match what they want to spend. Be able to match what they're looking for in return. Give them options. Packages is really important in being able to do that. Strongly, strongly encourage you to add packages to every gig that you have. Some best practices when it comes to those packages. You want to set the packages up in a way that encourages most of your buyers to purchase that standard package, that middle package. Your basic package should really just be a taste. It should be a sample of what you can bring to the table. Uh, now it has to be something you're comfortable doing because buyers will purchase it. But it, again, just a taste. On the other side, that premium offering needs to be for buyers who wanna go above and beyond with your service. That standard package has to be that Goldilocks package right in the middle, just right. We want most of your buyers to, to go towards that package. If you find that most buyers are going elsewhere, they're buying your basic package more or they're buying your premium package more, consider adjusting your packages. So whatever they're buying the most becomes the middle package and then build on either side from there. Make sure you're adding value to each package. As you step up in price, you should be stepping up in terms of the return that the buyer is getting. Um, for the, the example we saw here, um, you see as each tier increases in price, the buyer is getting more, more bullet points, more words, increased value as the price increases. So always keep that in mind. How are you giving the buyer a greater return in exchange for greater revenue? Make sure your packages are named um, appropriately. Um, and by appropriately, I mean, make sure they match your service and describe what the package is. Um, I encourage you to get creative and, and add a personal touch there. I love when sellers do that, but you want to make sure that there is a match between the descriptors and, and the package itself. Um, don't just pick random words and, and title your gig with, or your packages with random words. Uh, make sure it has a professional appearance that describes each package. Staying on pricing for just one more minute here, I wanna talk about gig extras because gig extras is a great way to put more money in your pocket. In a lot of cases with pretty minimal effort. 
Um, I like to compare gig extras to the, the candy bar aisle as you're checking out of a grocery store, right? Things that you don't necessarily know that you want or need until they're right in front of you. And then you're like, of course I want that. You see a great example here. Um, Steve is a, um, an HR guy. He does resumes, things like that for a living. And you see, this is his resume gig, but his extras include a cover letter. They include a, a LinkedIn profile optimization. Things that a buyer maybe went into this gig not knowing they wanted, but by the time they check out, they do know they want those things. And it's more money in Steve's pocket. I really encourage you for gig extras, think about what buyers are asking for. Think about what they need. Think about quick things that you can do to, to monetize, to give the buyer a greater experience, but also put some more money in your pocket. Extra revisions is a great one. In a lot of cases, buyers don't even use them. Um, high qual higher quality files is another great way to, to make a little extra revenue on a sale with really minimal effort um, in a lot of cases. So definitely, definitely, definitely think about adding gig extras to every single gig you have. The other big chunk of conversion here um, obviously is, is your gig description. It's front and center when a buyer gets onto your gig. You have 1,200 characters to convince a buyer why they should choose you instead of somebody else. To that end, just like with gig image, professional, professionalism matters. Make sure the spelling's correct. Make sure the grammar's correct. Spend the time cleaning that section up and giving it a professional appearance. If, you, if English isn't your native language, that is okay. We are a global marketplace and it is a beautiful thing. Find a proofreader. Um, there's plenty of them on Fiverr. Um, again, for an affordable price, you can have somebody look over and make sure everything just looks clean, crisp, and professional. It is a worthwhile investment. Um, really want to make sure that looks good um, because bad spelling, bad grammar could turn some buyers off. In terms of what should be in that gig description, you want to make sure that you hit the relevant pain points, right? What problem are you solving? Um, how are you going to address those problems? Why are you equipped to answer the needs of the buyer? Um, and really use that section to set expectations for the buyers. We've talked about buyer satisfaction here. This is a, a key component of that. If the buyer has the proper expectations of what to expect throughout the entire order process and throughout the entire dealings with you, they're gonna feel better as long as you match those expectations. So let's look at the kind of the anatomy of a, a great gig description here. Again, establishment of the need to use the service. What are you solving for the buyer? Um, why are you equipped to solve it? In this case, the seller qualifications are towards the bottom there. That's okay, but they've got to be in there. What makes you equipped to answer this need for the buyer? Do you have a professional background in the field? Um, do you have an education in the field? Have you worked with reputable clients or on reputable projects, put those things in there. Let the buyer know why they should order from you and not somebody else. And then again, establish those expectations. Um, make sure the buyer knows what you need to be successful, what they can expect in terms of the flow and the process, and ultimately what they're going to get out of this at the end. Now back up top on the gig, um, you've got those image slots next to your main gig image. A couple different ways we can use those slots. Gig gallery um, is basically your ability to add up to three additional photos um, of your choosing that display right next to your gig image. You want to make sure that you kind of follow the same principles in regards to the gig image that you do, um, that you follow those same principles here. Um, it should look professional, it should fill the screen, um, and it should be relevant to either yourself or the service. In this case, the example is a professional Spanish voiceover artist. And right, you see that that gig gallery image really shows that off. Um, that image, I love this image. It's one of my favorites on Fiverr. Um, really just embodies what he does every day. So that's what you should be going for um, with those gig gallery slots. Live portfolio, also up on that same uh, image bar. Basically, Live Portfolio is a feature that allows potential buyers to see the work you've done on Fiverr before. Um, it, it's a great way to establish legitimacy for those potential buyers. They want to see that they're paying for the real deal. 
And in this case, you're not just showing off work you've done. You're showing off work that you've specifically done on Fiverr. That really makes buyers feel good about if, if you can show off a quality delivery there, they're going to feel really good about the fact that if they order from you, they too are going to get a quality delivery. Now, live portfolio is a feature um, that should be turned on automatically. Um, it should be turned on by default. If it's not for some reason turned on on your profile, you can just go on your profile to one click of a button to turn that feature on. Strongly, strongly recommend using live portfolio. Work samples, another great way to use those slots up top. Um, you can use those gig gallery spaces to show off previous work. Um, pretty common misconception on this front is that this is only relevant for um, visual categories, graphic designers, logo designs, things like that. It's not. Obviously, it works for those categories very, very well. But it also works well for non-visual categories. Um, the, the example here shows off what I mean, right? This is an article and blog writer who's able to show off, look, this article I, I've written has been published. This is the quality of the work you can expect. It just looks good, looks professional. You've got to make sure that the work samples you're putting, though, are representative of a typical delivery that you might do on Fiverr. Right? If you're a 500 word blog writer, you probably shouldn't have your master's thesis as a work sample. You wanna have something that shows a buyer like this is the, the type of thing you can expect if you order from me. Staying on conversion here, frequently asked question section. Use it, add one. Every single gig you have should have a frequently asked questions section. Couple reasons. One, it just adds a layer of professionalism. I know I've hit on professionalism a bunch so far, but it's really, really important. Um, a frequently asked question section just looks good, um, especially if you spend some time building it out, put at least three questions there. Um, but it's also a great opportunity for you to reduce in-order issues. It becomes a great opportunity to think about what are the typical issues I may run into with a buyer and can I address those before they order? Definitely, definitely wanna have those in that FAQ section. It is okay to repeat critical information from elsewhere on your gig. Um, you just wanna make sure you spend some time building that section out, making it look good. If you go to whatever category you work in, browse the marketplace, click on the top rated sellers in that category. I almost guarantee you that almost every single one of them has a frequently asked question section on their gigs. It's not a coincidence. It definitely is an important part of making your gig the best it can be. Similar note here, um, conversion um, in regards to your biography. Now your biography is not technically part of your gig. When you create a new gig, you don't have to fill out your biography every time. It's in your profile. That said, it does appear on every single gig you publish. In the buyer's eyes, it might as well be part of your gig because they're going to see your description, your work samples, your FAQ, and your biography. So you have to treat it like part of the gig because perception is reality. To those buyers, it pretty much is. So spend some time in your biography establishing your credentials. What's your background? Why are you offering this service and why are you equipped to charge them for this service? What's your educational background? What experience do you have in the field? Really establish legitimacy with your buyers. It's crucial. Um, and to that end, people are going to click on your profile, right? They're going to get to your biography. They're going to be interested and they're going to click on your profile. So spend some time also make sure, making sure your profile looks good. Um, make sure your education and credentials and, and certifications all look good and professional and are filled in. Make sure your gigs all have that, that nice, professional looking gig image. Make sure you've got a shared brand identity that really shows off um, you know, who you are between all of your gigs and between your, your profile. Spend some time on that as well because it does make a difference. Last slide here um, before we get into the, the Q&A. Right, you've got this beautifully optimized gig firing on all cylinders, now what? Let's talk a little bit about gig promotion real quick. Um, social media promotion is a, a really kind of common sense um, way to, to get yourself out there. Share your gig on, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, 
whatever social media you're on, by all means, share that gig. Um, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your professional networks. Like we talked about, we want to get momentum here. Anything you can do to publish yourself and, and promote yourself outside of Fiverr is awesome. Think about if you had a physical store, you would advertise that physical store. Same thing with your gig. So definitely use social media promotion. Um, on a similar note, embedded seller badge is a great feature for those of you who maybe have your own website. Basically, it allows you to produce a, a badge that you can build right onto your website that will link people to your Fiverr profile and to your gig. Again, it, it's about promotion. It, it's about how do you advertise that you do this service. So if you've got a website, definitely encourage you to, to add one of those embedded seller badges um, and push business from your website right to your Fiverr gig. Um, Cause again, momentum, we want to talk about momentum and, and how do we get that boulder rolling down the hill, bringing business in from elsewhere, a great way to do that. Fire request is another great way to get a little momentum, especially for those of you who are relatively new to the platform and trying to get those first couple sales. Buyer requests kind of works opposite of how Fiverr normally works, right? Typically as a buyer, you go seek out the sellers. It's the opposite for the buyer request field. Basically, if a buyer is struggling to find a seller or doesn't want to find a seller, they can post what they're looking for. I need someone to do X, Y, and Z for me. And then sellers can answer that request with their services. Again, it's a great way to pick up some low hanging fruit, get a couple sales, take care of those buyers, make them feel good, make them feel happy. And that will get the ball rolling. Definitely, definitely recommend using buyer requests. Again, especially for those of you who are just starting out trying to get a little momentum. The BYOB program um, is a really cool program, admittedly not available for every single seller on Fiverr yet. It is continuing to grow. It is continuing, continuing to expand. Um, but I wanna tell you a little bit about it so you can keep your eyes open for it. Basically, Bring Your Own Business allows you to bring clients that you may have off of Fiverr onto Fiverr without worrying about the Fiverr commission. So kind of everyone wins in that scenario, right? You get more buyers on Fiverr, which again, momentum, momentum, momentum. You don't, you get to do that without worrying about the commission involved. Um, and obviously we bring new buyers onto Fiverr. So everybody wins there. So keep your eyes peeled for BYOB. Um, it is something again, that's continuing to grow. So with that said, that wraps up the presentation. 